man, there is a lot going on in my backyard. And you're going to hear birds probably coming through my windows, not literally coming through, but their songs are going to be coming through my window. I'm watching bunnies running around trying to mate. I'm watching squirrels do the same thing. I know that there's a cardinal building a nest in this tiny little tree that I have right next to my deck. And animals, through God's creation, have instincts. So do birds. They are supposed to mate at a certain time. They are supposed to collect food at a certain time. And it is all to procreate, to keep the species going. Why is it that us human beings don't realize that God made us for a purpose? The church is a family. We are the brides, whether you're a man or a woman. And the church itself, Jesus Christ is the bridegroom. I really mean, sorry, not the church itself, but Jesus is the bridegroom. This is why you hear him saying, oh, when the bridegroom's still around, the people aren't going to fast. But when the bridegroom is gone, they will fast. And Jesus told us how to live so frequently. But the ruler of the world until Jesus comes back is Satan. Can you not see how Satan has perverted human sexuality? Not just human sexuality, but human nature. We are called to have a loving relationship with God from the very beginning with Adam and Eve. Yet, many of us don't even know God. That was me for 42, 43, 44 years of my life. I didn't know how to pray. I certainly didn't know how to fight the spiritual battle that we're going to talk about today. I did a quick little video, my YouTube video. It's a short, it's less than one minute. And it's about falling off the proverbial wagon. And I want to tell you that wagon is you. You have full control over your thoughts, over your body. You can fight the spiritual battle. And by the way, Satan has to allow you to have free will. So when you choose to do things against God's commandments, it's your deal. Yes, you may be tempted, but it is time for you to learn how to fight the spiritual war. So when you are tempted with something that you know is probably going to cause your soul to be damned, maybe you need to think about that before you take that step forward and do that act. I know that Satan was totally messing with me. And I was not close to the sacraments. I was not going to daily mass. I was not receiving Jesus in the Eucharist. I was not going to confession every week. I was going to confession every month or so. And because I didn't put on my spiritual armor, I was seduced. I believed what Satan was telling me which was, hey, it's okay to drink. Hey, it's okay. And when I say drink, by the way, that's not a bad thing to drink. But when you're a drunkard, that's a bad thing. And more often than not, I was drinking more than I should. And then, of course, smoking pot. Some of you may have other vices. Maybe it's lustfully looking at people and committing adultery in your mind, or maybe you're actually committing adultery and having an affair with someone. Maybe you are married and you're watching pornography. And this, my dear friends, is against God's commands. So we all have to take ownership over ourselves because we have authority we can cast out demons. We can stop, pause, and pray before we just go into that sin. 
We can pray to our mother. We can pray Mother Mary, not our mother mother, but we could pray to our mother mother, our biological mom. We could pray to Jesus. We could pray to the saints, especially the saints that have the same or had the same problems as us. So get out there online and look up the patron saint of pornography or adultery or addictions. I can throw a few out there. St. Augustine. I believe St. Gemma is another one. Anyway, it's time to stop making excuses and to put yourself in the fighting mode. So today in the readings, we hear, and let me see, let me scroll up and tell you what reading I'm reading. It's Acts chapter 8, verse 1 through 8. And I'm going to the very bottom. Now those who had been scattered went about preaching the word. Thus Philip went to the city of Samaria and proclaimed Christ to them. With one accord, the crowds paid attention to what was said by Philip when they heard it and saw the signs he was doing. This is the important part. For unclean spirits, crying out in a loud voice, came out of many possessed people. And many paralyzed and crippled people were cured. There was great joy in that city. So Philip is casting out demons. People are possessed. You're not possessed, by the way. You are taunted. You're either obsessed with your mind. You're either oppressed by outside forces coming in. And we have to, in the name of Jesus Christ, because this wasn't Philip, that was healing these people and casting out these demons. He was doing it in the name of Jesus Christ. So when you feel that temptation, don't convince yourself, because it's not you, by the way. Remember, all the demons have access to three things, three things of yours. They have access to your body. They have access to your memory and they have access to your imagination. So they can put thoughts in your head, memories. So let's say you're watching porn and you're trying to stop this addiction that you have. He, the little demons, are going to put memories of the porn films that you've been watching, and then they are going to attack your body and make your body have this urge this overwhelming craving that you're going to have to fight. Because if you're smart enough, you realize, wait a minute, why do I want this so badly? Because you have just given in to those urges instead of stopping, pausing, and praying. So when you feel that urge and your body is just going crazy, Stop. Don't just go to your computer and turn on the porn. Stop. Have some self-control. You are the wagon. You can control this. And pull the name of Jesus out. Say, in the name of Jesus Christ. You have to say it out loud, by the way, because good spirits and evil spirits cannot read your mind. In the name of Jesus Christ, I renounce the spirit of pornography, pornography, the spirit of addiction. And I command you to go to the foot of the Holy Cross for Jesus to pour his precious blood on you and to receive your sentence. And then pay attention. This has happened to me with Oreos in my cabinet in my kitchen. I have this overwhelming urge to get up and go eat the Oreos. And when I'm not paying attention, when I'm not consciously realizing what is happening, I'm just going to go right to that cabinet, tear open the Oreo box, and I ate a whole roll without milk. A whole row of Oreos. That's like, I don't know, 15, 10 to 15 cookies. And it was ridiculous. I was out of control. I ate and ate and ate and ate, and I felt so sick afterwards. 
And then the very next day, the exact same thing happened. I'm sitting at my island and I have this overwhelming urge in my body. And this time, (laughs) this time I said, nope, we are not doing this. So I stopped and I paused and I said, in the name of Jesus Christ, I renounce the spirit of addiction, of temptation. And the biggest waterfall of peace came over me. No more did I have that bodily urge that I didn't think I could control. I knew that it was Satan and his demons that were tempting me. Why would they tempt me with Oreos? Well, at this time, it was during Lent. And I was down to one meal a day. So I was totally tempted. And this was also during COVID and the shutdown. So I was also being attacked with depression and with fatigue. It was a bad time. I have so many podcasts on that. So I know a lot of you have listened to me for a long time. I don't want to repeat those stories, but let's just say you have the ability to completely control yourself. You have authorization. And by the way, those demons have to obey If you do not willingly do it and you cast them out in the name of Jesus, please look online how to pray deliverance prayers. Because the only thing that Satan and his minions want is for you to ruin your life, to ruin every relationship. So there's a twofold strategy of Satan and his dominions, or his minions, I should say. Number one is to keep you sinning, and number two is to ruin every single relationship in your life. And he wants you in hell, burning. So you are the wagon. You can control it. It's not some other being or, you know, the universe or any of that stuff. It's you. And I allowed myself to be duped for so long, talking to myself and convincing myself, constantly going to confession, confessing the same sins over and over and over again. That's sometimes the process. And we have to love ourselves through it, but we also have to act. We have to take ownership of our life. Okay, this is not Kendra that is saying this. I'm going to get in and share with you another Bible verse. 1 Corinthians 6, 9 through 11. Do you not know that the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God? Do not be deceived. Neither fornicators, now these are people that are having sex outside of marriage and they're not married, or they're actually married, although that's adulterers. We'll get to that in a second. Nor idolaters. So if you are worshiping your phone, your job, social media, money, and you are putting it over the love and the attention for your family and the people who God put in your life, you're idolizing something other than God. Oh, by the way, this includes new age stuff. You know, for those people out there who are worshiping another God, that's idolatry. Worshiping the universe, Buddhism, Hinduism, all of that. All right, I'm trying to, where was I? Okay, let me go back to the beginning. Neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor homosexuals, nor sodomites, nor thieves, nor covetous, So that's you coveting your neighbor's goods, your neighbor's wife, your neighbor's husband, other people, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor extortioners will inherit the kingdom of God. Okay, now listen to this. This is the good part. And such were some of you, but you were washed You were sanctified. You were justified in the name of the Lord Jesus and by the spirit of our God. So there you go. 
You are on this journey. You are listening to this podcast because you are trying to be righteous. You have been called. Jesus says, come follow me. So now it's a matter of you acting in your life. No more excuses, no more whining, no more, oh, woe is me. Stop, pause, and pray. Cast those temptations and those evil spirits out of your life. When you do and you find that peace, the light bulb will go off and you will realize that you have truly been attacked. Now, there's a lot of us who maybe not be, maybe aren't being attacked because we are voluntarily doing it ourselves. That was my life for 42, 43, 44 years. And I say those numbers because that's how long it took me to get out of mortal sin. Yes, I was tempted, but I didn't need to be attacked because I was living and choosing to live the way that the world told me. I was my God. I was my own Holy Trinity, me, myself, and I. I did whatever I wanted Whenever I wanted it, no matter what or how it could hurt another person. I committed adultery on my first husband. Thank God for him. He was at my father's funeral. He was at my husband's funeral. My whole ex-family was there for me, even though I brutally destroyed our marriage and my first husband's heart. I stomped on it, but he has forgiven me. I have asked so many times, what can I do to make reparation for this? And he's like, you can forgive yourself. And he said, at least you were courageous enough to leave. So again, blessed with two amazing husbands in my life. And the first one, very Catholic. And his family, I mean, just, I can't even tell you how wonderful they are. Okay, let's stop, but I'm not kidding here. you got to take control of your life. Aren't you tired of being a whipping post? A whipping boy or girl? By the way, I don't know if you know what that is, but back in the day when... The kings and queens, you know, when something would happen and someone would do the wrong thing, oh, they wouldn't take the punishment themselves. They would whip a boy. Aren't you tired of being Satan's whipping boy or girl? Because you have absolute control. You have authority over your body. You have authority over your thoughts. Maybe you're not committing mortal sin, but you are thinking judgmental thoughts. You are looking at someone and immediately saying, oh my gosh, look at what they're wearing. Look at what they've said. Why are they wearing that in church or mass? You know, those kinds of thoughts we have to capture. We have to give it to God and say, Lord, I am sorry for this thought. Immediately capture it. Like I said before, strangle it with the clenching fist and lift your arms straight up and say, Jesus, take this, please. I unite this emotion and this feeling and this vice to you on the cross. Please, through the Immaculate Heart of Mary, I always try and go through Mary because Mary is the fastest way to Jesus. I'm going to say this for all of the people who aren't Catholic that listen to this podcast. Why do we pray to Mary? Number one, we are not worshiping her. Number two, we are asking her to intercede for us, to go to Jesus on our behalf. Why? Because Jesus can't say no to his mother. Let's go back to the wedding at Cana when she said they have no wine. He said, woman, it is not my time. She's the new Eve. That's why he called her woman. Eve didn't even get the name until after man and the rib came out of man and became woman. Anyway, I digress back to why do we pray to Mary? Because she is sitting at the right hand of Jesus. She was assumed into heaven. Nobody has her body anywhere. 
And because she gave up her life and was the mother of God, she was a perfect vessel. She did not have other children. She was a perpetual virgin. She was overshadowed by the Holy Spirit, and that was how she was pregnant. Her and Joseph gave their lives to God. They did not have marital intercourse. And why would she do that with Joseph? He did not. He had original sin. He was not perfectly sinless like Mary. And so what Mary does is she takes our pathetic prayer, you know, like picture yourself with every other Christian out there standing in line, going to Jesus and asking him directly. Well, first of all, he's God. And you and me probably have some selfish or less pure, I don't know, reasons behind our prayer and our petition. So I look at myself holding a paper plate with my petition on it, and it's all greasy, and it's seeping through the paper plate, and it's hitting the ground because it's not a pure petition. But if I pray to Mary, then Mary puts my petition on a beautiful gold platter. She's first in line because she's sitting right next to Jesus. Those two are inseparable. And she purifies my prayer. It may not be the outcome that I am praying for, but she knows the best for me, and so does Jesus. And again, Jesus cannot say no to his mother. So let's remember this as we fight the fight. And if you talk to any exorcist, they will constantly say how Mary herself and her name, they hate her. That's the reason they rebelled against God. Because God said, I'm going to bring myself and my son down to earth as a creature. Good angels and bad angels are higher than we are. But now Mary, because she gave her entire life to God, is over all of us. And that is why Lucifer said, are you kidding me? He was ticked off that he wasn't number four. Mary was number four. And rightfully so. She's the mother of God. She was perfect. She barely said anything in the Bible. Her last words was, were, do whatever he tells you. And that is her job, to bring us to her son. Okay, this is getting long. You have control over your wagon because you are the wagon. When you say you fall off the wagon, it's because of you. Don't forget that you have control over your mind, over your soul and your body. And you can fight that fight with deliverance prayers and keeping yourself close to the sacraments, keep going back to confession. I don't care if it's the umpteenth time that you've confessed that same sin. Confess it again. Run back, especially if it is a mortal sin. And you should be embarrassed every time you say it. I know I was. Gosh, there were so many times that I cried and cried and cried and kept thinking, what is wrong with me? But you keep fighting and you keep remembering that it's a spiritual war and that Satan convinced you to damn your soul by doing these vicious things. That's what vice really means. They're vicious. And it could be thoughts and words and deeds. Okay, let's pray. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Lord, please Strike our hearts with this reality that there are no excuses. We absolutely have free will. And when we choose to do what Satan wants us to do, we are truly turning our back on you. And none of us wants to do that. So strike our hearts with this truth that we have control over our minds, our bodies, our words, 
and especially our deeds. Help us to stop, pause, and pray and fully take ownership of our lives. Lord, we are going to pray for all of the people that went before us, praying that they are in purgatory by name. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in our lives on earth as it is in heaven. Please give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation. But deliver us from evil. Amen. In your holy name, Jesus, we pray. Amen. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Okay. You hear in that prayer that Jesus taught us how to pray. You got to forgive. It's not a question. You also have the ability to deliver evil out of your life. That's why they're called deliverance prayers. Please go look them up. Arm yourself. Because in the name of Jesus, as he said in the Bible, greater things than these will you do. Peter brought Tabitha to life. You just read, or I just read to you, hopefully you read the daily readings today, That Philip was casting out demons of people who were possessed and healing the crippled and the sick. He wasn't doing it on his own. In the name of Jesus. Remember, you have to pray those out loud and own it. Own it, own it, own it. Because God's going to look at you and say, how come you didn't fight with all of the skills and all of the teachings that I gave you? Did you just roll over? Oh, woe is me. Enough. You are the wagon. (laughs) So drive it, people. And I love you. I don't mean to be yelling at you or anything, but I do definitely want you to realize that you have control. No more excuses. Step up and fight the spiritual battle because that's what St. Paul said what we have to do. It's not people. It's powers and principalities. By the way, those are two of the nine choirs of angels. Do you know the choirs of angels? They're around you to help protect you. So we should be praying the St. Michael chaplet to pray to all of our guardian angels, the normal angels, the cherubim, the seraphim, the principalities, the powers, the dominions. I know I'm missing them. There's nine. But that is what's happening. And you know, if we could see the fight around us between the good and the evil angels, wow. I don't think we would be able to focus on anything. So grateful we cannot see the fight that they are fighting around us while we're in our cars trying to keep us safe. When we're in a moment of temptation, just remember that the angels are everywhere. And do not forget that when you are in mass and you pray, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. This is when all of the angels and the saints spiritually are with us. They are around the altar. So try in your heart to pray to all of the angels and the saints during that time. Try to imagine them all around while you are getting prepared to receive Jesus in the Holy Eucharist, in Holy Communion. Okay. 
Woo. I love you all so, so much. You've got this. With God, you can do anything. And with Jesus, you can fight the fight. Find something more with God, as always. Soul, mind, and body. And have a blessed and inspired day.